uh, from the Sanctuary of Crossway Ministries right here in Greenwood, Mississippi. And I uh, got to my right, Brother James Wilcott, and to my left, Brother Jonathan Melton, at the man tonight. So, thank you for the men of God. Amen. And we uh, uh, we got uh, the Lord just uh, really got something laid out for us tonight. Got a table spread tonight. We just hope that you can uh, uh, be blessed and we'll learn something tonight. We, we learn as we go. We're growing Amen. in grace. Yeah. Knowledge of our Lord and Savior, this great revelation of the cross has been uh, afforded to us. Thank Amen. You. And as always, I want to encourage you to uh, uh, get you a good King James Bible, word for word translation. Follow along with us. Take notes. Judge us based upon what the Word of God says, not what the other people say, but judge, judge us right according to the Word of God. Amen. We're we, we, uh, not afraid of that. We're not Amen. talking about asking right. you to do that. Amen. Matter of fact, we desire that you do that. Judge us according to the Word of God. Amen. Amen. Before we do anything this morning, we're going to go before the Lord in prayer. We're praying for all the people across the country. It's just, just on my heart always, praying for the other uh, uh, churches and assemblies that's preaching the message of the cross today, those pastors and their congregations. We're going to lift them up, and we will surely invite you to join with us as we lift up uh, uh, these assemblies tonight that are determined to know nothing but Jesus Christ and crucified. They, they, they have a... Uh, Satan's out to destroy. Uh, there's nothing that he targets any more than the message of the cross and the messenger of the cross. So uh, we just believe in God tonight uh, for his uh, safe protection for each and every one and for his provision as well. We're praying for the sick tonight, those in the assembly here, and then also anyone uh, out there. If you're sick in body tonight, we believe that Jesus is still in the healing business. Amen. Amen. He's a great physician. Hallelujah. So we're just going to bleed yes. with you tonight for that healing and provision, whatever your need is tonight. We just want to, to you to believe, and we're going to believe with you tonight mm -hmm. on behalf of every mm -hmm. single need. Amen. So let's, uh, let's just go ahead and pray right now, if you'd like. Just lift your hand toward heaven. And uh, Father, yes. we come to you tonight. Lord, Father, once again, it's a privilege. You. It's an honor to gather yes. uh, in this sanctuary tonight, Lord, in the presence of God's people. Uh, whether they be here, whether they've joined us by live streaming, uh, and in the presence of our great God tonight, Lord, we pray, Lord, uh, that you bless this service tonight, Lord, that there be a special anointing upon the ministers tonight, and on our lips to speak, and every ear to hear tonight, Lord, we pray that you draw people uh, far and wide to uh, this broadcast tonight, Lord, wherever it might be. Uh, literally going out around the world to as many as would log on and drink of the water of life freely. We're praying for all of these assemblies across the country tonight, yes. Lord. The, yes. Those that are preaching the cross exclusively. Mm -hmm. Those that are determined to know nothing but Jesus Christ and Him crucified. We're lifting them up tonight, Lord. You know who they are, right where they are. And uh, Lord, we pray that they'd be favored tonight, that they'd be blessed, they'd be encouraged. Lord God, their faith, we pray that it would be, uh, uh, Lord, to be established in this great and glorious truth, Lord, Lord that yes. liberates us. And we pray, Lord, God, uh, that they would continue in that faith and be not moved away from the hope of the gospel, Lord. And we just believe in great things in Hallelujah. each of these assemblies tonight, Lord. Bless the pastor tonight, his wife, the assembly. Uh, the congregation, Lord, and each and every one who pray for their live streaming, whether they go out by Facebook, YouTube, whatever avenue that uh, they're going out tonight, we pray, God, that they would go into the lives of many people tonight as well, believing for souls to be saved and, yes. and uh, your, the power of the cross to be experienced. Yes. And, and bondage is broken Hallelujah. by your mighty power, Jesus. Lord. Yes. And uh, let there be fruit, Hallelujah. Lord God. Yes. And we just pray for healing, Lord, and all the people tonight spiritually, uh, Lord, that whether it be um, uh, physical or mental or, or, or spiritually, Lord, whatever the need is, Lord, we pray that they be made every bit whole in the mighty name of Jesus. Glory to the Lamb of God. We're so thankful, Lord, for once again the services you've been giving us at at Crossway Ministry, we pray, God, that we would continue to be obedient, Lord, to your will, your plan, your purpose for this pastor, this ministry, yes. Lord, that where you planted us, we're still right where you put us in the beginning, oh, Lord. We, yeah. We're still right here, oh. camping out where you placed us in the very beginning, uh, some uh, 18 years ago. 
and uh, Lord, uh, you remember, you have truly Lord, blessed us, Lord. We're thankful for your faithfulness, Lord, you. Lord. And we're believing you for great Thank things you, in the days ahead as it pertains to uh, uh, reaching out to this community and, and living it to the world yes. uh, by live streaming. Lord, we thank you, Lord, tonight for the technology, the avenue of Facebook and YouTube to reach out by. Lord God, we pray that you bless it with many ears to hear tonight, yes, Lord. And once tonight, again, Lord, Lord, Lord we. Uh, we ask that you help people, us tonight, Lord. We've already been praying, but Lord, one more time, we ask that you would help us tonight, Lord, and uh, that uh, we would do no damage to your word, that everything that we say would be uh, pleasing, bring you glory and honor as we lift up your son. Uh, we pray, God, that we'd be able to speak with clarity and understanding uh, that uh, the people can understand. And uh, we pray, God, that the people will receive tonight, Lord. Amen. We pray, God, that they'll be blessed, encouraged, challenged, convicted. And, uh, Lord, we pray that all will grow in grace and yes. the knowledge of our Lord and all Savior. And all that he did at Calvary. Oh, Amen. hallelujah, what a great salvation we have. Well, because we have a great Savior tonight. And his name is Jesus. And what makes him great is the atoning work that he did at Calvary. Father, once again, we love you. We give you all the praise and all the glory. We ask it all in the mighty name of Jesus. And everybody said amen. Now, let's just lift our hands and give you a to wherever you are. Just right there. Don't, don't be ashamed of the gospel. And uh, don't be ashamed of Jesus. Hallelujah. And just give him praise and give him glory and give him honor tonight. He's worthy of all the praise tonight. He's worthy. Let us exalt him, magnify him, yes. and glorify yes. him tonight. Hallelujah. Yes. Worship him Hallelujah. and glory in his cross tonight. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes. Praise yes. the Lord. Yes. Amen and amen. I apologize. Got the sniffles a little bit tonight. Let's go, let's go to the Bible. Let's go to the Word of God. We are uh, earnestly contending for the faith. We've been uh, moving right along in uh, 2 Corinthians and and I've been teaching on uh, Colossians on Sunday morning. Sometimes I get too confused and forget where I'm supposed to be at at a particular time. But we're we are we're, we're at uh, Colossians, excuse me, Second Corinthians chapter five tonight. And I was telling the men earlier before we start started the program that uh, it's interesting how a lot of what we're dealing with on uh, Wednesday night is tied directly into where I'm at on Sunday morning as it pertains to our preaching and teaching as we march through Colossians. And so Amen. I'm going to, yes. and I'm going to be going over to Colossians tonight to, to uh, bear witness to that, tie a few things together tonight. Uh, so uh, I, I want to begin in particular tonight, and I know we've covered this a little bit already. I don't spend too much time there, but I, I want to begin tonight uh, going backwards a little bit or to verse 14, 2 Corinthians chapter 5. In verse 14, spending just a few minutes there. And then uh, then I'm going to move down to verse 17. We're going to read it. Let's just read. And then uh, I'll come back with my comments and, and what I have uh, to share with you tonight. Amen. Amen. Uh, it says in verse 14, it says, For the love of Christ constrains us, because we thus judge that if one died for all, then we're all dead. And... Uh, uh, it, I'm going to move down to verse 17. We covered verse 15 and 16 quite well the other day. I think uh, those that may miss one of our programs, I've, I've noticed you can go to Facebook if you're on Facebook. Uh, well, it's the way we're going out tonight is by Facebook. But you can go to my page, Wayne Balls, and type in Continue for the Faith in the search bar. It'll take you in just all of the the previous Amen. messages Amen. for uh, continuing for the faith will, will pop up so Amen. you can view those that you may have missed. But we've dealt quite thoroughly, I think, with verse 15 and 16. I just want to bring out a point again in verse 14. So I'm picking back up in verse 17 now. Amen. And uh, these two men uh, have a, quite a bit to share on those verses of Scripture. And I will try my best to give them time to do that tonight. Verse 17. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature, a new creation. All things passed away, and behold, all things are become new. 
And all things are of God. That simply means that all of these new things are of God. Amen. Yes. And it says, who has reconciled us? Well, Jonathan, well, James both are going to explain what this word reconciliation means in just a moment and, and with a good bit of death to it. And it says, who has reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ and has given, us to, has given to us, that's really every believer, has given to us the ministry, a ministry, the ministry of reconciliation. There's really only one ministry, and it's the ministry of reconciliation. It's preaching a message that That's reconciles, it. which is the message of the cross. Amen. 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 The message of the ministry of reconciliation is preaching the message of the cross. There's nothing else to, to add to that but the message of the cross. Amen. And it says, to wit, Amen. Amen. We, uh, we've decided that that means the best we can tell looking at Strong's Concordance and not making a big to do out of it, it means according to the, to the wisdom of God, according to His wisdom. According to His wisdom, the wisdom of God, it, God was in Christ, Lord, God. reconciling the world <laughs> unto Himself. And remember, Hallelujah. Uh, Hallelujah. we've been baptized in Christ, and uh, remember, and we brought it out Sunday how God was already on the ark. He was yes. first one in the ark, and uh, he was uh, uh, he was saying, "Come, come on board the ark." And it's a picture uh, of Christ or God being in Christ, reconciling, saying, "Come, come yes. to Christ, yes. come to His Son." And what He did at Calvary, to wit, that's the wisdom of God. Amen. That God was in Christ, reconciling the world. God was God. <laughs> God's not working in anything else. It's right, it's right here. Amen. Amen. God was in Christ. God is in Christ. God uh, is His wisdom Amen. is Him working in and through Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. And it counted, yes, yes. That God was in Christ reconciling the world unto Himself. It, it, it goes out to literally to all the world. Yes. Amen. It only applies to those that believe. Amen. But uh, it's been made available to the entirety of the world, the entirety of the human race. To wit, that God was in Christ, reconciling the world unto Himself, not in, not imputing their trespasses unto them. Those who believe. This brother, yet to those that believe, Amen. To those that believe, Amen. This brother's going to bring that out a little bit more in just a moment, Amen. Not imputing their trespasses unto them. And has committed unto us, there it is again, has committed oh, unto us. Oh, in verse 18, it says, has given unto us ministry of reconciliation. Oh, and, and here it is in verse 19 again, and has committed unto us the word of reconciliation. So you tie those two together. What is the word reconciliation? Well, it's the cross, the preaching of the cross. There's no reconciliation apart from the cross. That's how we are reconciled. And it's faith in the cross is how we maintain reconciliation. It's faith in the cross is how we maintain right relationship with God through Christ. Amen. Amen. And it says to it, God was in Christ uh, reconciling the world unto himself, not imputing their trespasses unto them, and has committed unto us the word of reconciliation. Believers, look what the note says. If you have spies of the Bible, it says all believers are to preach the cross. No, excuse me, to preach the cross in, in one way or the other. Amen. Amen. Uh, what that means in one way or the other, it means, you know, some of us have a little bit more insight. Amen. But, you know, whether it's in conversation, whether it's on a platform, whether it's on the job, or wherever, wherever you might be, amen, tell what you know. Amen. You know, preach what you know, share what you know uh, about Jesus Christ and Him crucified. If you have been saved, if you have been reconciled, you know enough to, to share with other people the word of reconciliation. And then you and that, and if that person believes and receives, we're all growing together in our understanding of this great gospel. From that point, once we're reconciled, we begin to grow. Amen. Amen. We begin to grow in, the, in grace and the knowledge of our Lord and Savior and all that He accomplished there. Amen. We won't exhaust that this side of glory. Amen. That's right. That class is never out. Amen. 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 When, the, when the bell rings is when the class is over. When the trumpet sounds 
is when the, when the class is over. Amen. Amen. And uh, we'll probably be still be learning some things even Amen. after that time. Praise but God. it says there, uh, not imputing their trespasses unto them and has committed unto us the word of reconciliation. Now, then we are ambassadors for Christ. Now then, thank you, brother. Now then, we are ambassadors for Christ. Amen. Not of the world anymore. Amen. But now then, we are ambassadors for Christ. As though God did beseech you by us, uh, we pray you in Christ's stead, be ye reconciled to God. Verse 21. For he, uh, God the Father has made him Christ to be sin for us. He didn't become a sinner. Amen. Amen. That means that he became a sin offering. Amen. Yes. Because Christ became a sin offering for us, there is where everything begins for uh, us. Yeah. Yes, yes. Amen. Yes. When our faith is there, there's where all the old is moved out. There's where all the, the, the new is brought in. Behold, everything. Uh, all the old is gone. Old things pass away. Everything becomes new. Amen. Jesus Christ is the beginning and the end. He He ended all the old at Calvary and he began all the new at Calvary. At one place. It all happened at one place, at one time, by one man. Amen. So that means it's by faith in what Jesus did at Calvary. Amen. Amen. He said, for, for he has made him to be sin, a sin offering uh, for us. Who knew no sin, it speaks about Christ. Who knew no sin, he was perfect, clown of God, without Amen. sin. Amen. Amen. That we that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. Amen. There's that phrase, in him. Right. Amen. We become the righteousness of God in him. Apart from him, outside of him, uh, it, you know, if, if anything, is is self-righteousness. We're just on our own. Apart from faith Amen. in the cross, it's faith in the cross that places us into Christ, where we uh, we give Him our sin. He He gives us His righteousness. Amen. Now go back up to uh, just for a moment. I, um, I'm hoping I don't spend too much time on this because I don't want to burn up uh, too much time for these men. Go back up to verse 14. That word constrains there. Just dealing with it for just a moment. Amen. For the the love of Christ constrains us. I've been looking at that quite a bit. Strong's, Strong's Concordance has several definitions. You go to different scriptures and there's different uh, uh, different understandings, but the, this is what I come up with. Constraints there means to hold on to. Amen. God's holding on to us. <laughs> yeah. Amen. Provided that we're holding on to him by the only means that we can have him, yes. he can have us, which is faith in the cross. That's the reason I say all the time, you know, we're clinging to the cross. Amen. Amen. He's holding on Praise to us. Amen. Amen. And we're in his grip as long as we're clinging to the cross. Amen. So the word constraints there, and once again, the things that I'm saying is not all conclusive. There's other things that would be equally as right, I'm quite sure. But I'm just giving you my definition for the night. Amen. It means to hold on to. It means to keep in. Hold on to, keep in. Amen. It means to arrest and to take one prisoner prisoner figuratively speaking amen not forgetting this that what we taught uh on sunday morning not forgetting that we have been placed into christ amen yes. we've been placed baptized into christ romans 6 and 3 amen don't you know that so many of us were baptized into christ that's where we're kept that's that uh, holding place for the saint of god that's where we're kept in amen <clears throat> We're kept in that place, and that place is Christ. Okay. Amen. So Romans 6 and 3 says, Don't you know that so many of us were baptized into Christ, were baptized into his death? Praise it God. took place at his death. Yes. Amen. And it continues to uh, play out in, in that fashion as we keep our faith in what placed us there in the beginning. Romans, uh, excuse me, Colossians uh, one in, in, in 23, amen, continuing the faith and be not moved away from the hope of the gospel, amen. And, it, and it, because it says there, uh, because uh, we, we thus judge, that, that means that we have determined that 
what we teach and preach is right. Amen. It's yes. been resolved in the heart. Hallelujah. These men, I'm quite sure there's no question in our heart tonight. Amen. That the gospel is all about Jesus Christ and him crucified. Amen. That's the reason we're determined to know nothing else. That's the reason we preach an exclusive message. Amen. Amen. Those that uh, that preach something other than the cross alone, Christ and him crucified, it has not yet uh, been resolved in their heart that that is right. the only gospel you see. Oh, so right. uh, it says because we thus judge that if one died for all, Jesus died for all, yeah. and then we were all dead. That means that we were all dead in sin and trespasses, yes. all. Uh, everyone, no one is apart from that position. We're all born into the fallen race of Adam. We all were born as a fallen son or daughter in the household of a fallen race. And the fountainhead of that fallen race is Adam, amen. Exactly. Yes. So then we're all, we were all dead in sin and trespasses. That means that we all need a savior. We're right here, amen. We're giving yes. an invitation for uh, people to be saved. We start out, I'm a sinner. We have to acknowledge, people have to acknowledge that they are sinners in need of a Savior. Amen. Amen. Before they can be saved. I, I, I'm in need of a Savior. I recognize I'm a sinner. Amen. And I need a Savior. And that Savior is Jesus Christ. Then all of the, you know, uh, we are either dead in sin or dead to sin. Uh, we're either found dead in sin or we found dead to sin. We're made dead to sin once we have been baptized into Christ. Once we have uh, embraced the truth, we have repented of our sin, we've, uh, uh, we, we've become saints in the eyes of God, we've been born again, then we are dead to sin. Romans 6 and 11. Uh, reckon yourself indeed to be dead to sin but alive unto God through Christ Jesus amen. our Lord. Amen. We have to consider. Praise amen. We, we reckon. That word reckon means to take to sum up. It means to consider all that you've heard. We've made a, a, a judgment that what we have heard as it pertains to the gospel is right and we're going to embrace it and we're going to walk in it. Yes. Amen. By faith. Amen. Hallelujah. Now, reckon yourself oh, indeed yeah. to oh. be dead under sin. Sin's not been removed. Sin nature nature remains within the, the life of the, the within the believer. Amen. The difference Amen. between the believer and the unbeliever, uh, the sin nature is there, but it rules and reigns. It has dominion. But in the believer, the sin nature remains, but it no longer has dominion. Yes. Romans 6 and 14, sin shall not have dominion over you, for you're not under law, but you're under grace. Grace is that uh, that working of the Holy Spirit, the, the mighty work of God, amen? But we are dead to sin. We're dead to the sin nature. Yes. Sunday morning, again, we were looking at uh, Colossians chapter 3. In verse 3, it says, Amen. For you are dead. Amen. Amen. So Paul uh, repeatedly refer, uh, refer to our uh, new position in Christ as being dead. Amen. For you are dead. What does that mean? It means to be dead to the old life. It yes. means to be dead to the old. We're dead to the old life. It means that we've been removed. It means we have been separated from all uh, that the old life represents. Amen. We're dead to all of that. Amen. The old man is dead. And your life now, oh, the life that we now live is in Christ Jesus. Amen. The old is dead now. And your life now is what? Is hid in Christ. Oh, amen. amen. That's what uh, there you are. Amen. Now we've been placed into a, 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 a position in Christ whereby Satan cannot touch us, amen. Amen. That, <laughs> hallelujah. That ought to make a mummy shout tonight, amen. 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 So it says, for you are dead, amen, and your life now is hid with Christ in God. With the phrase in God there means God's plan. This is God's plan, amen. You're now in God's plan for your life. Okay, now I want that to sink, sink in. 
Apart from the cross, you cannot be in God's plan for your life. That's right. God's plan for your life is to be hid in Christ. Amen. God's plan for your uh, life is to embrace the, the sacrifice that Jesus made on the cross. God's plan for your life, amen, is to believe the wisdom of God that's all wrapped up in Christ in Him crucified. Amen. amen. Do you see that, ladies amen. and gentlemen? Amen. You are now in God's plan. We're hid with Christ in God. The word with Christ, you're going to see the phrase uh, with Christ, you're going to see the phrase in Christ repeatedly in scriptures in the New Testament. With Christ, in Christ, they both both mean the same. Amen. We're with Christ because we're in Christ. Yes. Amen. So don't, don't think that it means something different. We're with Christ because we're in Christ. If we're not in Christ by virtue of our faith in the cross, we're not with Christ. Amen. So we're here with Christ because we're in Christ. Amen. And it's according to the plan of God. Now, let me take just a moment and say this. This is the wisdom of God. God chose not to remove sin. God chose not to remove the, the Satan. The, God chose not to remove uh, all of these different things that might come against the child of God. But God, in His wisdom, oh. has chosen to remove us. Praise you God. see, that's the wisdom of God. Yes, right. The wisdom, the so-called wisdom of men, is trying to train, uh, is to try to train us to deal with these things through programs. There you go. You know, right. so that's that's the right. wisdom uh, of of uh, man. Right. Humanistic psychology is man's attempt. To, to train us to deal with the dilemmas of life, to deal with sin, whatever that might be. God's wisdom leaves all that in place, but he removes us, you see. Not through rehabilitation, not through some type of a training method, amen, but through faith in the cross, amen. Isn't that great? So, so all of this stuff that's infiltrating the church, you know, where you need to be involved in this this process or this uh uh, this program or that celebrate recovery you know God uh, doesn't recognize any of that he doesn't recognize any of these programs that's being promoted by 99.9% of the church world to try to so called rehabilitate right, right. Uh, the, you know it's hard for me to even call them believers because the object of faith is not right if they're believing in all these different programs amen uh, God doesn't have a rehabilitation program. God reconciles, he and he redeems, and he changes, Hallelujah. and he does it immediately one way, one by faith, amen. One method. And what God, one method, amen, one way, one and that's through faith in the cross. So here we have it in um, Galatians chapter 1. And this is strong, but this is what not only did the apostle Paul say this, Amen. But God is saying this through the Apostle Paul. Amen. Galatians 1, chapter 8, verse 9. Now, it says, if any man, say any man, doesn't make any difference who that man is. It could be someone who was preaching the gospel right at one time, but he's changed course. Now that person falls into the category of any man. Amen. That we, we, we should avoid. Amen. That's the reason... Uh, we are to judge everything presently, even according to the Word of God, right. and, and according to the, the in the context of the cross, because people change, preachers change. We've we've witnessed that. There's been preachers in time past that was on board. My goodness, on board with the message of the cross. They they were friends. I had a preacher in the pulpit right. here years ago. Right. And I'm not going to name the name, but if I did, you would know. You know, we've had them. We, right. They sat down. We'd have uh, right. meals together. When they come into my home, they preach from the pulpit. I go preach from theirs, and and, and, and so on and fo so forth. But they became influenced mm -hmm. by some something outward, something that entered into their heart and their mind, and they became influenced. Whatever that is, Amen. Some. Uh, realized, you know, after a while they had to take the determined banner down because of the offense of the cross. Right. They looked around and the cross uh, 
that know what it even were. They realize, well, I'm losing friends. We're losing people in the church. And we're, we're, the, the preaching across is not going to win friends. Preaching in cross is not going to build a bank account. No, it's going to It's going to do right like the opposite of both. That's amen. right. Uh, that's the reason we have to be determined not to know anything amen. other than Christ and Him crucified. Because the cross comes with an offense. Well, what is the offense? Well, it comes with a wrecking ball. It's going to start tearing down flesh. Yes. It's going to start tearing down self-will. It's going to start It's going to start busting up everything that you used to think was right. Everything that you was once clinging to. Y'all agree with that. Y'all yes. concur with that tonight. So amen. it becomes an offense. So these preachers took their determined batter down and began to embrace other things. And then people began to love them again. Amen. And right. people began to support them again. Amen. Uh, preaching the cross is not a money maker. Preaching the cross is not, uh, you don't you don't uh, win any badges and trophies in public relations by preaching the cross. Right. So Galatians chapter 1 verse 8 through 9 says this, if any man preach any other gospel the gospel is Christ and Him crucified. If, if, if any man comes preaching any other gospel, God says uh, unto you or anyone then that you have received, amen, what have we received? We received the one that God gave us. And He gave it to us through, mainly through the Apostle Paul, but actually once we began to have our eyes open to it and, and heard what the Apostle Paul was teaching us through his epistles, now we see it from Genesis to Revelation. Amen. Amen. So, uh, if any man preach any other gospel unto you than that which you have received, the one that God gave us, the message of the cross, he said, let him be a curse. A ministry of what does that mean? Amen. Amen. Let him be a curse. That means the loss of one's soul. Amen. Yes, yes. Let him be a curse. Someone asked, you know, somebody asked, what happens to false teachers? Amen. What happens to all of these false teachers? And there's many out there. They're, uh, they're, they're everywhere. <laughs> Amen. And, 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 and Jesus said that that's the way it would be. He said there would be many that would come in my name and that they would de deceive many. There's many deceivers that are deceiving many. That's what deceivers do. They go about deceiving others and they are deceiving many. But we don't have to be victimized. We don't have to fall into that net of deception. Amen. We have, I have a Bible. Amen. We have a Bible. And it's important not just to know what it says, but to understand what it means. Once your eyes get focused on the cross, then your 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 mind, your your heart, and your whole being, amen, will be open to the understanding of the true gospel and what the word of God is trying to say amen. to us and teach to us. But it yes. takes believing that cross. It takes believing that and having our eyes fixed upon the cross for that to happen. If you look away, God's just going to allow you to continue in a strong delusion. That's what Paul said in 2 Thessalonians. Amen. Those that love not the truth. Amen. They're just going to be handed over to a strong delusion. God allows them to believe a lie and they'll be damned. Amen. 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 This verse of scripture is strong, ladies and gentlemen. Yes, it but it means exactly what it says. Amen. Let him be accursed. It speaks of the loss of soul. Someone asked. What happens to these false teachers? This tells us, this verse of scripture tells us there's no halfway house. No halfway. There's no halfway house, ladies and gentlemen. There's no halfway house. The fence belongs to Satan. There's no halfway house. Amen. For those who pervert the gospel. Amen. Amen. The gospel yes. is Jesus Christ and him crucified. Amen. If they come presenting any other thing, they are attempting whether knowingly or unknowingly it makes no difference amen amen they come to pervert the gospel they come to make disciples of deception amen so it is so is it important that you know the truth that Jesus spoke about yes amen is it important I'm amen. asking tonight lady is it important that you study the word of God and that you might write a dividing word of truth that you might be find yourself approved unto the Lord. Amen. Is it important? Yes, it is. It's vitally important. Praise Amen. God. It's vitally important tonight that you uh, sit down under a ministry or a ministry 
uh, member of the fivefold ministry that's just preaching the message of the cross exclusively, that's constantly pointing you to the cross for all things that pertains to life and godliness, that preaches the cross without any leaven. Yes, it's vital to your soul. It's vital to the to your family. Amen. And you cannot be a minister of reconciliation without knowing the one message of reconciliation that God has given us, which is the cross. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So there you have it. Those that was asking that question today, what happens to these, what, to these that, that false teachers? God's not winking at it. Amen. Amen. God's not winking at those that are preaching something other than what he gave us through the death of the son. God gave up his only begotten son, allowed him uh, to, to be crucified on a cruel cross so that we might be liberated from the grip of sin, so that we might be reconciled. God's not going to just wink at these that come in, these creepers that come in, that creep in with a perverted gospel, amen. They, the Bible says that they'll find themselves accursed. They will lose their soul if they do not repent amen. and come back to the cross and come back to the truth. Jesus said, you shall know the truth amen. and the truth will make amen. you free. Amen. Amen. Truth that you don't know can set you free. So it's important that we understand, you know, here we are. Most of the people across Greenwood Town, you know, they, they could care less about the message of the cross. They're involved in whatever they're involved in. Amen. So, so God knew that it would be that way in this day and time. So you see 1 Corinthians 1 and 18 worded the way it is. For the preaching of the cross... It's to them that perish foolishness. Those that see the cross foolish as being foolish, the Bible says they're cursed. Amen. They perish. Amen. But to us which are saved, those that have been reconciled by the blood of the cross, those that are clinging to the cross, to us we see it not as foolishness, but as the power of God. Amen. Amen. We, we have experienced that power. Amen. And what we know to be Amen. true and what we have Amen. experienced is what we will preach. Amen. Amen. Now, just another scripture or two here, and I'll hand it over to you, man. Philippians chapter 1, verse 27. Only let your conversation, Paul is saying, you know, here we are. Here we're, we're an exclusive present, to an exclusive message. Amen. It should reflect in your life. Amen. It should be fruit. Amen. Only let your conversation, the word conversation means what you preach and how you live. Amen. Amen. What you preach and how you live. Well, Amen. Yes. We're. we're uh, if we're experiencing the power of the cross, our living should be changed. Hallelujah. Amen. We should be yes. living the cross. Amen. Uh, it should be played out. It should be uh, our life should reflect what we're what we're uh, what we are believing today. The power of God should be uh, recognizable in our life, and it has changed us from what we Praise used God. to be. Thank the, God. The growth in our life should be recognizable. The fruit is always seen. Amen. Fruit. It's always something that can be seen. Fruit is always on the branch. Amen. Because we abide in the vine, which is Christ. John chapter 15, 5. Amen. And fruit is always something that's recognizable. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Uh, only let your conversation, uh, only let your conversation uh, be as it becomes Yes. becomes, that means being in agreement with. Yes. Being in agreement with. Now let your conversation as it becomes, being in agreement with the gospel. Oh, Amen. Yes. Only let your oh, conversation, God. your lifestyle, be as it becomes, being in agreement with the gospel of, of Christ. Okay? Amen. Am I saying that? We're clear, we're, yes. Can we understand? Yes. What is the gospel of Christ? Well, the gospel of Christ is the message of the cross. Amen. Amen. The gospel of Christ is the gospel of the cross. You don't have two different gospels. Amen. The gospel, Jesus preached the, the message of the cross. Amen. He said, yes, I must go there and die. Amen. Jesus preached the gospel of Christ is the message of the cross. Thank Look you. what he says there. Once we've established that, he says, stand fast 
in one spirit, amen. Oh, that means that the entirety Hallelujah. of the body of Christ, they should be united in one spirit, standing fast in this Thank liberating Lord. truth yes. of, of, of Christ and Him crucified. <coughs> Apart from that, see, that this is where you find true unity. It's not the message of the cross mm -hmm. and our determination to preach that exclusively. That's not what's causing division in the body of Christ. It's those that are determined to embrace other things. There it is. That's yes. your, they're not in the they're not they're not in the one spirit. Amen. Yeah. As, as those that are clinging to the cross right. and turning from everything else. Yeah. Stand fast in one spirit with well, one mind. Right. Amen. Right. One mind. Hallelujah. Amen. Oh, One man determined to know nothing else other than Jesus Christ and him crucified. Amen. And here we go again. That one man. Look real quickly again. We go there and look to uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 10. And uh, y'all already know where I'm going, I think. 2 Amen. Corinthians chapter 10 in verse 5. Amen. Here's what we have to do. In order to be in that one spirit and that one mind as it pertains to the gospel, and we have to cast down everything else. Uh, make no mistake about it. Now, we, the people may believe it to be true. Amen. They may, they may stake their life on it. Whatever it is that they believe, they may be, believe it to be true, but it, it, it's really a fallacy. It's really make-believe. It's really an imagination because there's only one truth that God honors and that's faith in Christ and Him crucified. Anything else is imagination. Amen. Now these imaginations have been birthed in our mind by, from men behind many a pulpit in this day and time in which we, which we live. Most of these imaginations come from within the church, the body of Christ. Yes. Satan invades uh, the, the uh, true Christianity from behind the pulpit. Yes, he does. That's, yes. How, that's how he works his way into the lives and the hearts and the minds of the people by a man standing there with a Bible, a big smile on his face in a Bible. But he's not taking that Bible and pointing the people to the cross. He's using it to point people to other things. Amen. Whatever those things might be. And there's much out there. Amen. There's right. much out there. Amen. But he said we have to cast these imaginations down. And every high thing that exalts itself against, there it is again, against the knowledge of God. How God works. The knowledge of God is all wrapped up and what he did for us at Calvary. Amen. Amen. Anything else is the is is the wisdom of men or the knowledge of men. Vain imaginations. Make believe. Make no mistake uh, tonight, ladies and gentlemen. This is the reason we preach the exclusive message of the cross. Because that's the only place that God God works. It's the only avenue whereby you can find uh, help in your dilemma of life, whatever that might be, whether it's sin, whether it's bondages, or whatever it might be, whether it be uh, family issues, busted up relationships, or healing, or whatever provision. It all comes from what Jesus did at Calvary, Amen. Romans 8 and 32. Amen. Everything else Amen. is devised and it's a scheme and a strategy, amen, that begins with Satan, amen. But he has his ministers, amen. They, yes, they're ministers of darkness, but they present themselves amen. as ministers of light, amen. Jesus warned, maybe. Take heed that your light be not darkness. Amen. Take heed that the light that you're embracing and that you think that you're walking in is really not that it's not really darkness. Amen. Amen. So we have to cast all of these things That's away. Right. Amen. And in every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, and in, in bringing all of these things into captivity. Amen. That simply means to take it captive. Amen. And bring it all to the, to the cross. Amen. Take, if you don't take captive of it knowingly, 
Amen. Well, how do you do that? Well, you realize that once you know the truth that sets free, you realize that what you've been doing is wrong, that God's not honored. It will only uh, bring you into a curse. It will only damn your soul. Amen. And it's a very religious bondage that so many people uh, are, are wrapped up in. Well, now we take that thing captive, amen, and we bring it uh, to the cross. That's what it says. If we don't take it captive, amen, knowingly doing such, amen, <laughs> just, just like uh, Gideon cutting down all of those altars and groves, he knew what he was doing. People in town saw, knew what he had done, that he was, he was against everything except that one altar that had the sacrifice which pointed to the, to the cross of Calvary. And uh, if we don't take it captive and get it out of our life, it will hold us captive. It will, it will set up a stronghold in our life. Amen. Hallelujah. And it says, and take, uh, bring into captivity every thought. Every thought. We're to, we're to have one mind. That's what the scripture just said. One spirit. Amen. One mind. When that mind is the mind of Christ. What was the mind of Christ? He had to get to the cross. Amen. That's the mind and the spirit that we're to have. We have to get to the cross in every situation. Anything else is a detour. Everything else is leading us off to the left and the right. Amen. To have the mind of Christ. Amen. Is to make it to the cross. To cling to it. Amen. And to stay there. Amen. To stay there. Oh, to stay there. Amen. The, 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 the day that Jesus was crucified, there was multitudes of people gathered around him when he was nailed to that cross saying, if you are who you say you are, come down off that cross. If you're truly God, if you're truly the Savior, the Messiah, and the man that the, the way, the truth, and the life, if you're truly the one that you declare yourself to be, come down off that cross, save yourself, and save us. And that's exactly what the church wants today. They want salvation apart from the cross. They want a Savior apart from the cross. Amen. And it won't work. God won't honor it. The only thing you're going to find there, amen, is a lost soul. Amen. And uh, that's the reason we desperately teach and preach the way we do. Amen. And, and, and it says, and bring into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. Thank you. Lord. The obedience of Christ. He was obedient unto death. That's Philippians 2 and 8. There's your answer right. to what that is. Jesus became obedient, obedient right. to death. His obedience. Okay. His obedience. Amen. Yes. Amen. His obedience was being obedient to death, even the death of the cross. The Our obedience is to be to have the same obedience that he had. Oh, His Lord. obedience was to go to the cross and die there. Oh, yes. Our obedience is to go to the cross and die there. If we don't die there, amen, uh, we won't find this liberating life that we have in Christ Jesus. Amen. Let me catch my breath. Brother James, can you pick it up there for a yeah, few minutes? Yeah, praise God, brother. That's, that's absolutely right. You know, uh, to be in Christ is where is where the Lord uh, desires for our faith to be, is in the cross, that we be planted in Christ. Yes. Uh, 2 Corinthians 5 and 19, it says, to wit, God's wisdom, uh, that God was in Christ reconciling the world unto himself, not imputing our trespasses unto them. Uh, it says, uh, it says, and has committed unto us. Yes. Has committed unto us the word of reconciliation. Amen. Praise, Praise the Lord. God. Uh, the, uh, what I got on uh, reconciliation, it says, to change from enmity to friendship. That's good. Praise God. To change wow. from Hallelujah. enmity to friendship. That's it. The Bible says that the sinner, that we're condemned already. Mm -hmm. But Christ came not to condemn, but that the world might be saved really? through him. Mm -hmm. And uh, Ephesians chapter 2, verse 13. Uh, verse 15, if you'd go there, you can read this. People, Ephesians look, at us, people look at us and and they say, well, look, you're not surrounded by very many people. You don't have very many friends. And I said, well, sir, I have a friend 
His name is Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. I have him today. He became my friend. He became he my savior, my, my, my friend, my counselor. He's everything to me. Amen. Now, when I say friendship, what I mean by that in reconciliation, he changed uh, from enmity to well, friendship. Been that removed. means between Absolutely. God and man. Absolutely. The enmity has been removed. Amen. Now I have a friend. Absolutely. I'm a friend of God. I'm yes. a friend of Him. Now yes, yes. I have a relationship. Enmity has been removed. Peace been made. Been removed. Praise the Lord. Lord. Ephesians two fifteen tells us that yes. Yes. it says, "Having abolished in His flesh the enmity, yes. even the law of commandments contained in ordinance, for to make in Himself." Of twain, one new man. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. One new man. So making peace. Hallelujah. He's made peace between us and God now. That friendship, that reconciliation that has been took in place there. And it also means, it says to make one accepted. Hallelujah. <laughs> Reconcile. Hallelujah. To make one accepted. Amen. Amen. Ephesians 1 and 6 says to the praise of the glory of his grace. By which he made us accepted in the beloved. Yes. We're made accepted Praise in the God. beloved. In Jesus Christ and what he yes. did at the cross. We are made uh, uh, accepted in him. That is the reconciliation that he has made for the whole world. If they would believe. If Praise believe. the Lord. It's predicated on faith. It's predicated on faith. But the Bible, I want to take you back up here to uh, 2 Corinthians 5 and 19, where it says, and has committed unto us yes. the word of reconciliation. Yes. That word committed, it, it means to convince, ordain, or set forth. It's, has he convinced you yet that this is the gospel? Yes. Has he convinced you that this word of reconciliation, which is what Christ did at the cross to restore us and to remove the enmity between us and God, has he convinced you that this is the gospel? Yes, yes. Because if he hasn't convinced you that this is the gospel, then this is what you're struggling with. This is what you're struggling with. You're struggling to believe That's according right. to as it is right. written. That's right. And, you know, today, you know, I, I, I was in a guy's house. I'm not going to say who he was, but the other day, the day before yesterday, he was telling me he had a stroke. And, uh, you know, I, I went home and I was sitting there and, uh, you know, it was probably 11 o'clock at night. And I began to, the Lord began to start dealing with me to ask this man, has he believed according to as it is written? Have you believed on the only begotten Son of God? Have you believed that He not only died to forgive you of sin, but to also uh, to free you from sin's dominion, that you might live a life according to His purpose and His will? And you know, today, I, uh, the man, he came in the bathroom with me. I was in there uh, installing a new, uh, it was a, uh, toilet that hangs on the wall if not one that mounts. But it was new, it wasn't old. But anyway, he was in there with me and I asked him, I said, you know, Lord really laid it on my heart, you know, to ask you, you know, have you believed on the Jesus of the scriptures? The, you know, have you believed according to as it is written? And that's where it's at, my friend. We we need yes. uh we need to and that's why the Lord's given us this ministry oh my, and this my. word of reconciliation that we might be able to give to others yes. because the Bible tells us now then we are ambassadors of Christ as though God did beseech you by us. That word beseech means beg. That the Lord uh, is sent ministers and, and, and uh, apostles and prophets and evangelists and pastors and teachers to beg us, to preach to us, to, 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 to do all that we can do to try to convince us that this is the gospel. That this is the gospel, what Christ did at the cross, this ministry of reconciliation. He says, we pray you in Christ stead. It says, uh, being ye reconciled unto God. Uh, 2 Corinthians 6 and 1 tells us, uh, when then? 
as uh, it says, we then, as workers together with him, beseech you also that you receive not the grace of God in vain. We want to make sure that you don't believe in vain. We want to make sure that you're believing right, that you're uh, believing according to it is written. This is why Christ died to give us this ministry of reconciliation. This is the only reason he done it. Yeah. That he might get glory and that you might know what is right according to God's will and God's plan in your life. God's will in your life is for you to be born again and to cling to the cross until Jesus comes to take you home. Hallelujah. And that this life that Christ died might be manifested in your mortal flesh from yeah. this time forward, from the moment you believe until, until you grow old. That goes for the little one, the nine-year-old. From the moment you believe, you put your faith in Christ daily. Take up the cross that the Lord may begin to work in your life and show you his righteousness day by day as you take up the cross and study the word of God, seeing the word of God dipped in the blood of Christ, understanding what it means and what it says. Hallelujah. In Amen. verse 21, 2 Corinthians 5 and 21, it says, For he has made us, for he has made him to be sin for us, who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in yeah. him. Oh, that in we him. might be made the righteousness yes. of God. Oh. Only in him, oh, in him are you going to be made the righteousness of God. There's no other way to be made the righteousness of God. Amen. And I was looking at First uh, Peter where it says, who did no sin? First uh, Peter two twenty two. He says, "Who did no sin? Neither were guile found in his mouth." And Second Peter, uh, uh, no, First Peter, second chapter, verse twenty three says, "Who his own self bore our sins in his own body on the tree, that we." Being dead to sin should live unto righteousness by whose stripes we are healed. Yeah. All of this points to the cross. Yeah. The only way that you're going to be able to live unto righteousness is by clinging to the cross. Clinging to what Christ did for you yeah. on the cross. And, and, and being fully persuaded. Being fully convinced that this is the gospel. There's no other gospel but this gospel. This is the only gospel that can bring life. This is the only gospel that can break the enmity between you and God. There's no yeah. other gospel that can do that. I don't care what men have to say. There's no other gospel that can, that can take away the enmity between you and God. And, and, and if you hear this gospel and you let it get down in your heart and your life and you believe it with your heart, the Bible tells us it's clear in Romans 6. It says you have obeyed from the heart this form of doctrine. Oh, hallelujah. Yeah. Now you have become a servant of righteousness because you have obeyed this form of doctrine. What? What doctrine? This word of reconciliation. Yeah. This message of Christ in him crucified. This is what we give the people every every time the camera's on, every Sunday, every Wednesday night, every Friday night, every Tuesday, and whatever the juvenile the attention, you know, even at job on the job. This is what we give the people that people might know because we don't know when we're leaving this place. That's right. And we don't know when you're leaving this place. But I tell you what, time is too short to be playing around with stuff you've learned from me and that you know is not right to be constantly putting in front of people's face. That's right. We're to give them the gospel. Absolutely. And that's what we are to give them all the time for everything and for all things that pertain to life and godliness. Yeah. That their trespasses may not be counted to them, but that they might be wiped away. Hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. We've, been, been, we've been labeled quite often, you know, when we preach about preaching the cross. Uh, and all the time. Preach about preaching the cross. Well, the Apostle Paul certainly did that. And uh, the scriptures bear witness. Go back to uh, what I was reading, Philippians chapter 1, verse 27. Uh, go back to that just for a moment. I didn't finish that. It goes right in 
it goes right in line with what you just said. But you read these 127. Philippians 127. Only let your conversation. You just go there for this minute. That's where I was at just a minute ago. Amen. Philippians 127. Only let your conversation. That means lifestyle. Hallelujah. Uh, be as it becomes the gospel of Christ. The gospel of Christ is the message of the cross. Come on. He said, stand fast in one spirit with one mind. That, that mind is the mind of Christ. And uh, casting down all other imaginations. But I didn't make it to this. It says striving together. Striving. That means, if I'm understanding this right, and I think I am, it, it speaks the same thing as honestly contending. Yes. Earnestly striving together. Earnestly contending. Striving together. Striving together. Oh, Earnestly contending for the faith of the gospel. Amen. So, so we have here the, the Apostle Paul. You know, he's he's admonishing the church to strive together, earnestly contending for the faith of the gospel. Amen. So we have repeatedly with Paul is admonishing the church. You know, preach what, preach this gospel, preach what I've given you. Amen. And, and, and take it to the uh, four cor four corners of the the, the world. Uh, Paul told Timothy. You know, to do the work of an evangelist. So, what is the work of an evangelist? Just go out and preach cross. Hallelujah. Amen. Right. right. We preach yes, the reconciliation. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. There's, it's, that's the message in the church house. It's the message on, on street corner. It's the same message. Mm -hmm. What the lost man needs to has to hear, the, the, the saint needs to hear repeatedly as well. Amen. Amen. So, he told Timothy, he said, and I've always viewed Timothy. Is a is a type or a picture of the church. Yes. This, this learning from the apostle Paul and his teachings, and he told Timothy, he said, "You know, uh, do the work of evangelists and make full proof of your ministry." Mm -hmm. Amen. So Paul is, is uh, repeatedly, over and over, and he tells the church, the people, the ministers to to preach the, the gospel, preach the message of the cross, and, and the only ones that has a problem with that. Are those that are, are that are moving away from the cross? Amen. Those that attack us for, you know, for warning uh, against false doctrine, or those that are engaging in false doctrine, those that uh, have a problem with us preaching about preaching the cross, or those that are leaving the cross. Uh, they don't want to be reminded of the direction that they're headed, the wrong direction that they're headed, and the influences that they have succumbed to. So they don't want to. They don't want to hear the, the preaching of the cross all the time. Amen. But that's that's all the Bible uh, preaches to us. That's all we hear as it pertains to the to the Bible is the message of the cross it's all the time. Serious. That's what the serious. people need. They need the message Amen. of the cross all the time. Come on, for everything. For everything. All for him. Right. Always. Amen. Go ahead. Hallelujah. Amen. Um, I can't help but to notice uh, as I'm listening to both of y'all and I was taking notes. Um, uh, where to begin right here and I want to start in this way when you talk about striving together that's like I mean just a light bulb went on like it just confirms it's confirmation of everything that we've been talking about about uh, in Christ yes um, and the word reconcile means one of the definitions James definition he gave was right there's the others it's beautiful um, another definition of reconcile is to to be made one right. with Christ. Absolutely. Because um, he brought us together. He harmonizes. He harmonized the situation. He made peace. He brought us together. Um, the, the cross built a bridge, so to speak. It, it, it closed the gap. What Christ done That's right. at the cross, he made us one with Christ. And you said striving together. It says right here. I'm going to go back to that. Philippians 1 27 says, yeah. you know, stand fast in one spirit with one mind striving together for the faith of the God. The faith. That phrase right there in itself tells you how exclusive it is. That's the right. faith of the God. The God. Paul said the same thing in Colossians 1 5, the word of the truth of the gospel. That's so right. He put emphasis, the Holy Spirit has put emphasis on, on this exclusive message and, and striving together. And, and I noticed, and I'm going to go back up to, um, I'm going to talk about in Christ. That's what we're talking about. Like James said a while ago about this is the subject of in Christ right here. Christ. You know, when we're, you know, when we're saved, you know, as verse 17 says, therefore, if any man be in Christ, 
is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things will become new. And he, then he's given unto us that word of reconciliation because we have been made one with Christ. Yes. Because we're in Christ. And I couldn't help but to notice what I know. Forgive me for going too far ahead, but I just want to make note of this. We'll get there eventually, but if we, if we, unless we go to another subject, but in chapter 6, it says, We then are workers together yes. with him. And I thought about that when you said striving together, because I've been looking at that. I've been seeing how all of this flows. Yes. yes. All in. I, I know people say, you, you say that, you sure do say that a lot. <laughs> I'm going to keep saying it a lot. I'm gonna keep preaching about preaching the message of the cross a lot. Yeah. I'm, I'm gonna keep I'm gonna keep saying it because it's all flowing. When you go back to chapter three, all of this goes together because because we've been made one with Christ, given the ministry of reconciliation, and then He says we then are workers together with Him. Yeah. So in other words, as you said, striving together, we cooperate. With what God God's plan, that wisdom of God, right. yeah. that wisdom is verse nineteen to wit that God was in Christ reconciling the world unto Himself, brother, not imputing their trespasses unto them, and has committed unto us the word of reconciliation. In other words, it's the same faith, the same as 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 God was in Christ. You know, the power of God worked in Christ, that faith yes. that Christ had, everything he had come from the Father. He was one with yes. the Father. Yes. He was one with the Father. And listen, God does not work outside of this message. It's only one message. It's, it's one faith. It's, that's why Paul, he beseeched the people. He begged them. He begged the church. He exhorted them over and over to come to this and stay in this, to stay in this faith. Now, I want to... Um, so. Take everything that you just said and then go back to Galatians chapter 1, verse 8 through 9, and it says, If any man preach any other gospel unto you than that which you have received, right. uh, let him be a, uh, an accursed. Curse. You know, there's no, there's no, you know, I know people will take that and they'll say, Well, what is the gospel? Well, uh, it's, it's been made clear, amen. The word of the truth of the gospel is amen. the faith, the, the one gospel. One faith is Christ and Him crucified. Praise That's God. what we're talking about. Hallelujah. And He said, if any man preach any other gospel, anything other than the faith, the reconciling faith, amen, that removes enmity and brings us into right relationship with God, amen, He says, let them be accursed and that's the loss of souls. So these, these preachers that are preaching something other than the cross. Are not going to get away with that. No, uh, no. The, 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 there's going to come a day that uh, they'll be in that same group that's trying to convince God that they uh, were laboring for Him. And did we not do thus and such? Did we not uh, prophesy in Your name? Did we not do this miracle and that miracle in Your name? And He's going to say, "I never knew you." You know, to depart from me, I never knew you. Amen. Amen. So it's, it's going to be. Uh, it's going to it's going to be a, a price to be paid for at that time, and, and God, I don't think it's letting people get get off scot free now. No, it's not. No, it's nothing. It's going to hold water then. There's no excuses going to hold up then, and there's no excuses going to hold up now. Amen. Amen. But once again, it goes it goes up through my mind all the time. Jesus said there will be many. He said in every gospel. Mm -hmm. Uh, there'll be many that will come in my name, meaning that they come represent, they say they come representing him. Be many will come saying they represent him, and they shall deceive many. Amen. And those that are deceived are those that are embracing something other than the cross, even a mixture. God doesn't honor a mixture. Amen. Amen. Come on back to what you got. Amen. Um, and I want to explain him. Impute is beautiful. I did a little study on imputing. Um, if you don't mind, just for a second, I want I, I noticed something else because I, I always glean from you, brothers, when you're when you're talking. I'm, you know, sometimes I like being a close up man, <laughs> so I can come back and you know just recap and right. some things y'all were saying because because I was looking at when you was in Second Corinthians ten, 
something else stood out to me when you said take every all of our imaginations, yeah. everything, every thought, every yeah. thought, yeah. take it to the obedience of Christ. As I yeah. said a while ago, the obedience of Christ. Uh, this goes along with uh, uh, you know about the fact that verse nineteen says that God was in Christ reconciling the world to Himself. So by what He done at the cross, His you know He humbled Himself and became obedient unto the death of the cross. And in, in 2 Corinthians ten five it says we are to take every thought, yeah. every imagination, every pride, all of our pride, all of yeah. everything, yeah. Every, every thought, whether it's right. And it's good and bad. It ain't just a bad thought. It's the, when it says take every thought, that means even that, that good side of that tree. Right. <laughs> that good right. side of that tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Every thought, every religious thought, every thought to the obedience of Christ. That's where our faith has got to be. And I was noticing in uh, verse 20, I'm going to go back up if I have time. I, I won't take up much longer. But He died to save us uh, from our bad and our good. Amen. Good. Praise God. But uh, it says in verse 20, a portion that I want to look at, where it says, Be ye reconciled to God. Now, that is that takes us to Romans 6, 11, where it says, Reckon yourselves to be dead indeed unto sin, but alive unto God. So the, when the phrase, Be ye reconciled to God, it may sound kind of strange. What does that mean? Because he said, we're reconciled. We are reconciled to God. Then he said we've been given the ministry of reconciliation. And then he says, be ye reconciled to God. And when you was reading in 2 Corinthians 10, 5, I was, I was thinking about the, the phrase, be ye reconciled to God, is, is, is basically cooperating and taking every thought in other words, this this faith in operation. This is yes. being reconciled to God. Is this 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 faith working in us on a constant basis? So Paul, once again, there he's urging, and he's 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 beseeching, as he says in that same verse. I Begging. beseech. That's right. He's, he's begging you in Christ's stead. Be you reconciled to God. Doesn't mean you have to do something that has that has already been done. It's already been done right. at the cross. But he's basically. This is us maintaining our faith. Be ye reconciled to God is basically it's the Holy Spirit bringing to remembrance and keeping and stirring us up. Yes. To yes. remember what Christ has already done. That's how important it is right. to take every imagination, casting down imaginations to the obedience of Christ. It goes hand in hand with this being reconciled right. to God. So if I said that, well, I thought yeah, I, I struggle trying yeah. to say it. But but over um do I have time to explain imputation? Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Real quick. Go ahead. I did a study. You have what time's left. Because I worked hard on this. <laughs> I worked hard on this imputing. It's beautiful. I want to hear what you got to I want to get it out. Man. But uh, it says in verse 19, it says, not imputing their trespasses unto them. That is beautiful when you look it up. Not imputing their trespasses. Now, over, I'm going to go to Romans 4 in a minute to correlate or contrast the difference between imputed righteousness. We have those that are in Christ have been imputed his righteousness. Yes. But thank God he didn't impute <coughs> our trespasses. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. There's a, there's a contrast right here, but it's so beautiful when you study that. No, not imputing their trespasses means... He didn't take an inventory. The word impute right there means to take an inventory or an estimate. Right. Or to count or lay to the charge or blame or, or, make, or make it our responsibility to pay for our sins. That's like, thank God he didn't. That's what it says. He did not, not imputing their trespasses. That means he didn't, he's not making us have to pay for it. In other words, it's not as, as, as if God is saying you if, if he did impute our trespasses, it would be as if God is saying, you owe me. Right, it's right. like God saying, you owe me. Psalms 32, 1 says, blessed is he whose transgression is forgiven, whose sin is covered. Blessed is the man unto whom the Lord imputes not iniquity. See, Paul Hallelujah. right here is quoting from the psalm. Understand this, when Paul got saved, he went back and studied the, the Psalms mm -hmm. and the prophets. 
he went back. See, he had to unlearn. That's right. He had to be willing to unlearn all that he once knew. He said, I, what I once knew, I count it as dumb, lost, right. as lost. He had to be willing to admit, I was a proud Pharisee. That's what Paul saw of Tarsus. He was a Pharisee. He was a proud Hebrew of the Hebrew, he says. And, and he had to be willing to admit. So he went back and studied, and he often, he quoted from the Psalms right here, you know, because it says the same thing in Psalms 32. It says in verse 2, Blessed is the man unto whom the Lord imputes not iniquity, and, un, and, un, and whose spirit there is no guile. Hallelujah. Yes. And and that that is think about that. I want to make it clear for a moment. We preach justification by faith, but we don't preach just because we are justified. We're, it doesn't give us an excuse to For sin, sure. license to sin. Because when you study that out, it says, "Unto whom blesses the the man whom the Lord." Imputes not iniquity. That means he don't hold it against you if your faith is in Christ. He's not taking an inventory. In other words, the debt is removed. You know right, that. Right. See, before we Praise get saved, God. we're under law. We're under right. the, the wrath man. of God, the judgment of God. The law is hanging over yes. our head. But Jesus died in our stead. He is our. This is about our representative man. Yes. Christ is our representative, perfect man, you, and He took. Guilt, the punishment that we deserve. Uh, take note of Psalms 88. I'm not going there. It's too long. But in Psalms 88, go study Psalms 88, and you'll see that He bore the wrath, the wrath in our place. Jesus took the wrath upon Himself. It's all in the Psalms and the prophets. Yeah. The Psalms and the prophets prophesied about what Jesus would do at the cross for us. But, but it says. And blessed is the man whom the Lord imputes not iniquity. That means he don't hold it. In other words, he dropped the charges. Yes. Jesus dropped the charges. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Uh, and whose spirit there is no guile. I, when I was looking at that the other day, and I asked these brothers this, it looks like the way it's written, well, of course it is, when you understand what we've been studying already about being one with Christ, reconciled, made one with Christ. Notice this in Psalms 32, verse 2. Blessed is the man in whom the Lord imputes not iniquity, and in whose spirit there is no guile. It can actually read not only the man who's the man who has no guile in him, but it can actually be referring to this is prophetic about Jesus. Because right. James quoted, I, I was like, wow. When James said that long ago, where was that at? First Peter, he talked about who, uh, speaking of Christ, in whose spirit there is no guile, or something to that effect. It's over in Peter. I, I couldn't, I didn't hear everything he said, but it's in Peter. James was talking about that. So it can actually read in who in Christ there is no guile. So in other words, when we're in Christ, he takes the guile away. Yeah. See, he takes the word guile means deceit. To delude means treachery. Oh, so that, that's not in Christ. None of that is in Christ. Amen. So therefore, by us being in Christ, there's no guy. He takes the gal away. He takes, changes us. He takes that the seed out of us. Yes. You know, that lion, that lion heart. You know, he takes that Thank delusion. God. He takes all of that out of us when we're in Christ. Because we are hid in Christ. We're hid and we're hid with Christ. Christ has taken the guilt of penalty, the wrath of God upon himself on the cross. Right. Now, Psalms, excuse me, Romans 4, about, and this is what it's talking about right here, and, and we've been studying 2 Corinthians 5, you know, in Christ, really what it means is we're clothed in righteousness. We're clothed in Christ. We're clothed in Christ, in his righteousness, his very righteousness. We don't have no righteousness outside of our outside of Christ, right. within ourselves. We have no righteousness. I don't care if you're the best, you say you're the best Christian or the you show me, you show me the most faithful Christian out there, and he don't have no righteousness within himself. Right. There's no I don't care how good a person thinks he is, 
There's no righteousness in ourselves. This is the righteousness of Christ. Everything I'm trying to say, and I'm stuttering around, but everything I'm trying to say is all about Christ. And in Romans 4, it talks about uh, we've been imputed. It says in verse 3, we've been imputed his righteousness. For what says the scripture? There you uh, go. See, like James said, we need to believe in Jesus of the scripture. What, what says the scriptures? Abraham believed God and it was counted unto him for righteousness. That means accounted. Notice that. Because if he imputed our trespasses, that means he would count our every sin. He would name off everything. Now on judgment day, those that's not saved at the great white throne of judgment, yes, see, everything is going to be brought up. So, I mean, they're, I mean, the sins have not been covered. They've not been washed away. So on judgment day, we're going to have to, he's taking an estimate. He's like, you know, you know, he's taking inventory. Yeah. But but think about that. Just think about that. Not we. Say again. But not we. Not we. 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 We're not going to beat that. We're not going to beat the great white thought. That's what I'm trying to say. Those who are not even. Hallelujah. Not I. And, and the same way Abraham was saved is the same Amen. way. That's why Paul wrote it right here. The same way Abraham was saved by his faith, it, it was counted unto him for righteousness. That means he put it in his account. That means he he he, he said on the basis of my son Jesus, to him who works is reward not reckon of grace but of debt. See, if your faith is not in Christ, and if you're trying to earn salvation through works. There's a debt hanging over your head. That's right. There's a debt. If you're putting your faith in the law or in yourself, you're still, uh, there's law. There's, you're still uh, under the law. That's right. You're, there's a debt so high you can't count it. You can't look up to, to, to the stars of all the debt if you're putting your faith in something other than Christ. But unto him who works not, but believes on him who justifies the ungodly. Come on. His faith is counted for righteousness, even as David uh, also describes the blessing, blessedness of a man unto whom God imputes righteousness without works. Yes, yes. Praise God. So God uses the example of Abraham who was before the law, and he uses a man who came under the after the law was given to show us that both both are in the same, the ground is left with the foot of the cross. That's right. Yeah, that's listen, right. God, listen, God, there's, law cannot save anybody. That's why the Holy Spirit is using Abraham and David as an example that's that both right. of them have to have imputed righteousness. They had to believe. They had to believe under the one who was going to come, that's who right. was Christ. And now we look back to the one who did come. Also describes the blessedness of a man unto whom God imputes righteousness without works. Praise God. And, and that word, see, when God imputes righteousness without works, that means to put on one's account, to credit him with, to put on deposit so that he lays on us Christ's riches at, at the expense of Calvary. Yeah. Think about that. He, he clothes us. He lays on us. We have the very riches of Christ. At the expense of Calvary. Listen, I'm rich tonight. I may not have a lot of money, but I'm here to tell you right now, Hallelujah. I'm rich Hallelujah. in Christ. Yes. Yes. Amen. Sometimes we have to scrape and scrounge. We have, to have this treasure in earth. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Sometimes we, 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 we may be scraping the bean, beanie weenies or whatever in the, cam, in the cabinet. We'll be trying to find some Roman ramen noodles to cook sometime. But I'm here to tell you right now, I'm rich. I, I, Jesus, because when he imputed righteousness, that means he dropped the charge. Jesus dropped all charges upon our faith in his Hallelujah. death and then drapes us with a white robe of righteousness. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. And, and so we've been, he committed unto us the word of reconciliation because we've been made one with Christ. Yes. Praise God. Amen. Amen. Go looking at Strong's your uh, Psalms 32 and 2 Blessed is the man unto whom the Lord imputes not iniquity and in whose spirit there is no doubt Amen according to Strong's Strong suggests that 
no guile means no deceit. No deceit. And, yes, and it reminded me of, um, uh, here it is, it's Proverbs 12, 17, uh, which says, He that speaks truth show us for righteousness. Mm -hmm. But a false witness, a false witness, deceit. Right. Deceit. Amen. Amen. He, Amen. Who, he, he who speaks truth shows forth yeah, righteousness. Shows forth righteousness. Hallelujah. That truth that we talk about all night. Christ and him crucified. Hallelujah. He shows forth righteousness. Amen. Thank God. Yes. Amen. Righteousness is found in the gospel. In the gospel. Amen. Romans chapter 6, verse 1 and 2. Put those two together. I'll tell you right there. Amen. Praise Righteousness God. is found in the gospel. And the gospel is the cross. Amen. 1 Corinthians 1 17. That's the truth that we speak. And that shows forth righteousness. But a false witness is deceit. There's no deceit in Christ. Amen. Amen. He I says, do. I'm the way, I'm the truth. And I'm the life. Psalms almost always is referring to Christ, Christ first, yes. if not exclusively to him. Mm -hmm. Can relate to us. Amen. But Psalms is always mainly speaking of Christ. Amen. So it is saying that there's no deceit in Christ. Amen. 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 He's showing forth yeah. righteousness yeah. Through, yeah. Through, through what he did at Calvary and yeah. making it available yes. to us. There's no deceit in him. Amen. Hallelujah. And, and as, far, as, far, as far as the believer is concerned, if, if we maintain an exclusive objective, if I can say it like that, to, to, to preach nothing but Jesus Christ and Him crucified all the time to everyone for everything, then we won't be involved in bringing deceit and deception anymore. Deceit, deception. Amen. We'll be constantly bringing to them the truth. Amen. 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 Of course, that doesn't mean that everybody's going to accept it. Doesn't mean that everybody's going to embrace it. However, if nobody goes the way of the cross, we're, we're still preaching. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. If nobody believes, we continue we to just preach. Keep preaching. We, you true. know, I think about Noah again. Thank you. All of those years. Hallelujah. I think Hallelujah. I said it Sunday morning. Uh, I think I did. I think I got it right. You know, I think it was uh, around a hundred years, thereabout. That may not be exact, but uh, somebody might know exactly. But, uh, you know, around a hundred years that he was building that ark. Rest assured. And he may have been preaching the same thing but long before the ark. I don't know. But I know during the, uh, the, the building of the ark, the Bible says he was a preacher of righteousness, not of deceit. Amen. Hallelujah. And, right. uh, now, all yes. the the Bible says uh, that his father, Lamech, was his name. And the Bible says that Lamech, Noah's father, begot sons and daughters. Amen. And it says that he lived 500 years. Amen. So it says after he begot Noah, after he begot Noah, he lived 500 years and begot sons and daughters. That means that Noah had an untold number of brothers and sisters that were born by Lamech over a period of 500 years. So Noah uh, had a huge family of brothers and sisters, but he was unable to influence anyone. That's right, amen. You know, but yet he preached a hundred years there about a preacher of righteousness. What's a preacher of righteousness preach? He preaches Christ. Christ yeah. Yeah. He right. preaches the cross. Yes. Amen. Amen. He preaches, he points to the to the sacrifice. Amen. Amen. So he preached the sacrifice for a hundred years. There about. He wasn't able to win any of his family except for the, the seven that they got on board board dark with it. Amen. But the beautiful thing, that is sad. That within itself is sad. Amen. But they won't be able to stand before the Lord and say that they didn't hear the gospel and didn't hear the, uh, uh, the, the God's plan for redemption and reconciliation like you've done so good presenting tonight. Amen. That, that part is tremendously sad. But the beautiful part in all of that is Noah did not allow them to influence him. And we must be found with that same determination. There's your, 
you know, people I think sometimes don't really understand what Paul meant when he said, I'm determined I not to know do. anything but Amen. Christ and him crucified. Amen. It, that, that, everything that could possibly come against a man of God came against him yes. because of that determination. Try to overthrow him, his ministry, try to divert his determination, try to cause him to, to stop and, and to quit what he's doing because souls were at stake. Enemies always trying to polish up a lie and dirty up the truth. But when when he said that, many people don't really realize. And uh, to be determined to know nothing but Jesus Christ and him crucified to preach that means we, we have to do that or we're determined to do that even if our entire household turns against us. If, we, if all our family walks away, everybody that we know, if they walk away, uh, that's what that determination means. There's, there's a huge uh, amount of people out there that's trying to influence us, you men and myself. Most people that embrace this gospel, Satan is, is bombarding us with all sorts of efforts, schemes, strategies to move us away. Not just because he wants our allegiance back, not just because he's trying to overthrow our faith, but he's he knows that there's others that we may influence in the days ahead that may be saved. All is lost. All, all, all so much is is lost if, if we if we abort this, if we leave this message right, right. in this final hour. Right. We do not we can't comprehend, you know, what Today, we just focus in on the things, you know, the, the, the attacks and the persecution, and the, you know, life is, you know, is troubled at times and, and so many things, you know, we want a comfortable life. Well, that person that's going to is determined to know nothing but Jesus Christ and him crucified. His, his life is, the, the rarity is going to be rare that he finds himself in what you might refer to is comfortable. Amen. God didn't save us to comfort. <laughs> he saved us. Amen. To endure. He, yes. To, he right. equipped us to endure. To, to tell others. others. To tell others. To say again. To tell our others. Amen. To endure to the end. To, to do the work of evangelism. Amen. To endure to the end. But the, the end is close. Amen. Amen. We're going home real soon. Hallelujah. And so we have to take advantage of what time that we have, no matter how uncomfortable that we have, no matter how lame the cupboard, the cupboard gets, our main objective is to preach the gospel. On, and one yes. day, one day soon, Thank all of that's going to draw to a close. And uh, the, the eternal glory is going to far surpass any trouble, any pain, any upset that we might in any heartbreak Thank that you. we might endure Thank now. Amen. Thank you, Praise Lord. We have this treasure, Christ in us, in earthen vessels. Amen. Praise Thank the Lord. You, Lord. Thank you, Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. We give you praise tonight Hallelujah. for this great gospel. Ladies and gentlemen, I sure hope something we said tonight has been a Thank blessing, you, encouraging you. to you. I sure hope and I pray that. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Father, I know that there's, let's just pray a little prayer. Father, a little prayer. Father I know there's those out there tonight that uh, might be hurting. Uh, Lord, in their life, their walk with you, their homes, their relationships. Lord, I don't know who they are, but I know that you do. Hallelujah. Lord, and I just pray for these individuals right now. I lift them up before you, Lord, and I ask for you to, uh, to come into their heart, their life, and in their home, Lord, and to, uh, to help these folks right now. Lord, that you've done everything that's been busted up, Lord, that's according to your will. I know that you separate people at times, but that thing that's been busted up, but it's according to your will, Lord. Even that faith that's been busted up tonight, Lord, we pray God that you uh, put the pieces back you together know, again, that you mean and what you would do. Uh, that you would, uh, Lord, that you would restore everything that uh, yes. the locust has devoured, everything the canker worm has eaten up. Lord, 
Yes. Everything that the enemy has attempted to destroy. Thank you, Lord Jesus. God, we pray that you will restore tonight, Lord. Hallelujah. By your mighty Hallelujah. power. We pray that faith, Lord, will be brought Amen. back to that first love. We pray that people will come back to Calvary. We pray that repentance will, will come tonight, Lord, and people will be restored, to yes. be saved, to be Jesus. reconciled. Hallelujah. Lord God, all the enmity and everything will be removed. Relationship will be established. Once again, people will be brought back to their first love. Oh, hallelujah. Lord, we ask it and we believe it tonight in the mighty name of Jesus. Let there be healing tonight in that, in that person. Let there be peace. Let there be joy once again. Hallelujah. Lord, let there be peace. Let there be joy. Let there be healing spiritually, mentally, and physically tonight, Lord. People will be made every bit whole. In the mighty name of Jesus, well, praise the Lord. Well, God bless you, each and every one tonight. We're so, once again, we're so thankful that you saw fit to join us tonight. We sure hope that you can join us again on Sunday morning. Amen. If you can't drive into the church here on Highway 82, five miles west of Walmart, log on. Join us by Facebook. We'll be going out by YouTube and Facebook on Sunday morning. Amen. Service starts at 10. God bless you. Love you each and every one.